Hey everybody, how's it going? So today we've got an A1706 and it's not working properly. We're going to try to figure out why it's not working properly and make it work again. That's what we do here at Rossman Repair. So let's open this thing up and see what's wrong with this machine. Paul Daniel says, poor Erica. Indeed, Paul er poor Erica. She has to deal with me. That's pretty horrible. Okay, we have an A1706 and it's not turning on and... Let's see if we can figure out why it's not turning on. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put the overhead camera on so that you can see it. I'm going to unplug the battery since the battery being plugged in is not something that should happen when we're doing basic board diagnostics. I want to know how much power the board is taking, not how much power the board is using to charge the battery. Because the battery, if it's a, you know, depending on how full it is, will give me different readings. Whereas the board turning on without the battery will give me a consistent reading each time because it boots the same way each time or does not. Now I'm kind of curious if any of you can see from there what the problem is. We are taking 210 milliamps at 5 volts and we've got a white sticker over here and a red sticker over here and a little bit of corrosion over there. So we're going to take the board out of the case and see if we can fix that up and get this thing turning on again. And as you all know, if you've been paying attention and watching these videos on a regular basis, this chip over here is a CD3215. That chip is a Texas Instruments USB-C MUX, so it's going to deal with DisplayPort video, HDMI video, USB 2, USB 3, charging, Thunderbolt, all that sort of stuff and route it to the computer. And if you get liquid on it, it, that charging port won't work. Now this machine has four charging ports, and as a result of having four charging ports, it also has four CD3215s. And the way this machine works, if any one of those four chips dies, the machine stops charging through any of the four ports. So it only takes one of the four ports dying to cause all of the ports to not work. So I know what you may be thinking. Oh, it's, you know, I had a laptop at one point in time that only had one charge port. And if the one charge port died, my whole machine was dead. Now that Apple has a machine that has four charge ports, now even if one dies, I still have the other three. No. No, you don't understand. This is this was designed by Apple. You don't you don't understand, my friends. So that's not how this works. So we are going to see why this if we can just touch up that area and get this thing charging again. And if not, then we'll just give it to Paul because that's what we do here. There's also significant damage over here by this uh, touch bar connector. So that, that's likely something that's going to have to be replaced. I believe we may have some of those connectors on store.rossmangroup.com. I may not get that done today because getting that done today would mean that I need to, I'm going to miss a meeting that I have at 8 o'clock with Jessa, Nathan Proctor, and some other individuals that is important for me to make. So I'm probably just going to work on this enough to get it charging again and then shove it in Paul's queue to do the rest so that I'm able to make the meeting that I have to make in time because I don't want to miss that. That's an important one. And I also have something I have to do before the meeting as well. Looks like we got some stripped screws in here. So I'm not the first person to be inside this computer. Lovely, lovely. Lewis, I got a new job and they sent me a MacBook Pro. Counting down the days till I need to send it to you. You're just waiting for that 52 volts to the 1.7 volt data line, aren't you? Hey, you know, be nice to it. If you're nice to it, it may just work for a while. Yes, I did, Harriet. And if you're unsure what I said, you can always hit the rewind button because this is a video. And you'll be able to hear it. I've always been confused when people say what in an online chat room. I usually just wind up copying and pasting what I said before. So this is an Exolite 175M, and this saved my ass in 2009 when I was down on my last, like, five, four bucks, to, and I needed to fix this machine before the dead week of Christmas to get a stripped screw out so that I could fix it and collect the money. And this is a screw that's being really, really, really stubborn. So what you do is you squeeze the screw with the Exolite 175M. You twist it. 
In that case, I just cut the thing out of the machine. That I had to squeeze a lot more than usual. I, I can probably find a spare from a donor computer. We don't sell computers anymore here at Rossman Repair Group because the city expects that I provide documentation of where I bought each computer that I'm reselling, and I don't uh, buy computers from people because this is New York City where every computer that someone brings in is stolen. Dead fishies and route top of the hour. Thank you so much, Christopher Kelly. You are a kind man. Better than a nicer than I deserve. So I don't sell them anymore, which means I can take spare parts from all these recycled machines that people don't pick up. Okay. I give them the Paul because, Johan because I have a meeting at 8 o'clock that I have to attend to. Rob Brown is here. Did they at least try and work with you and not find you over that? I spoke to an attorney about it, and he said that I'm going to wind up torturing myself dealing with it, so I should just pay it and stop selling computers, since it's not what I make my money from. Uh, a big part of this is that apparently the law is written in a way where technically, I didn't even know this, but technically, I'm supposed to, when I sell a computer, I'm supposed to keep your address, your your home address, and your phone number and report it to the city each time I sell the computer. It's not just, I thought that it was just when I buy computers. I didn't know it was when I sell them. Now, when I sell a customer a computer, you when I, I don't ask them for their home address or their phone number. It's usually just name for warranty, and if they don't want to provide that, they don't have to. I didn't actually know that. What plier was that? Oh, that's an Xlite 175M. That's not a plier. It's fine tip snippers. How an Oreo's poop issue has not been resolved. Now, the, the, here's the thing, is that uh, apparently I need to keep track of your phone number and home address and submit it to the city each time uh, I sell a computer. And that I don't actually do. I never did that. I didn't even know I was supposed to do that. And honestly, even if I was supposed to do that, I, I, would, I would not do that because I don't think it's the city's business when you buy a computer from me to have to know your fucking home address, your full name, and your phone number. That's a little too invasive for me, and I wouldn't do that to my customers. So that even though I didn't do what they're accusing me of, I did something else that they're not accusing me of, which means that by not uh, just getting, if I do choose to take this to court, I could get someone who's really nice and understanding, or I could get someone who goes, okay, let's see your records for all the stuff that you sold, and then I'm just going, uh, because I don't have the home address and phone number for all those people. So because the law is written in that way, even though what I did was not wrong, I technically would be opening myself up to admitting that I did something else that may be considered actually worse than the thing that I didn't do, and that's probably just not worth my time if I am uh, in, if if I'm trying to start this new organization and get this up and running. Like, do I really? I'll I'll just take the L. Now, you know, I originally said this is a problem because I'm going to sell computers, but what if I just don't sell them? You know, Steve has been arguing with me for a long time that it is much more profitable to take these devices that we uh, that, that people recycle here and never pick up and use those parts for other repairs. You know, let's say you, you need to use screen assembly. Once the computer, once you can't find screen assemblies anymore... You know, give them a hundred bucks off and give them a used screen. Or if you know if you can't find a logic board online, you know, use the logic board that you have in the recycle computer. If it's good, use the parts from the recycle computer. Steve has always made the case that I can make way more money for the store by doing that by using these recycled parts rather than you selling the computer. Selling the computer is never as nearly as profitable as parting it out. And I've made the argument that we could always just buy those parts online. We need them anyway. And to look like more of a quote legitimate business, we should you know sell Mac. MacBooks. We're a store with 15 employees that sell that work on MacBooks. So people are going to want to come by and buy them. And maybe if you buy the MacBook from us, then that that you that may bring us referral business for repairs. Whereas if we don't sell them, you're going to go to somewhere else. You'll buy your MacBook somewhere else, and then you use them for all the repairs. However, if the city is going to uh, make it absolute nightmare to actually sell a product i don't really sell macbooks that much anyway i sell like a couple a year if even and i um i have to report to the city the fucking address and all that of my customers and i have to risk these misunderstandings with the department of consumer affairs because the inspector doesn't speak english um i shouldn't say doesn't speak english he speaks fine english he's just being a dick and not in not 
purposely avoiding everything we were saying so that we could fi- he could fine us, uh, then, then what's the fuck is the point? So I'm going to pay a $500 fine. However, here's the thing. I usually renew two licenses a year. I renew my uh, secondhand dealer license, 350 bucks. I renew my electronic store license, 350 bucks. So the city's going to get their $500 fine, but they're not getting the $700 for the license renewals because I'm never going to renew those licenses because I'm not going to sell stuff in New York City. So in the long term, New York City will not only lose the revenue, a tax revenue from sales tax from me selling those computers, but they're also going to lose the licensing revenue of me renewing those licenses because I'm no longer going to be in that business. So I hope the city is quite happy with themselves. But at the end of the day, there's so many things that I could be focusing on and doing, and focusing on that is such a fucking waste of time. In contrast, everything else. Like, I mean, yeah, you do, do you know, would, would it be cool to stay on hold for 15 hours at the DCA to finally get someone to get a little audio clip of them saying what I did wasn't wrong and then play that in court and then hope that I get some owned moment or what? I mean, yeah, you know, it, it would be cool to do that. But like at the end, like the amount of time I'm going to spend doing that shit when I could be focusing on everything else in life is just ridiculous. You know, you, you take the L and you, I, I learn a lesson. New York does not want me to sell computers. They clearly don't want me to sell or work on computer, uh, sell uh, laptops of any kind. And that's fine. That's fine. You know, I've heard them loud and clear, and uh, that's that. So it looks like this is an underfilled CD3215 over here. Yeah, we've got some corrosion by, so I'm going to try and just kind of... Obviously, there's not going to be any corrosion under the chip itself. There's not going to be any corrosion under the CD3215 because it is, you know, surrounded by underfill. What happens if the BIOS chip is damaged? The BIOS chip has nothing to do with this. I, if you're talking about the CD3215's uh, ROM chip, then, you know, it's not going to work. But that's not usually not the case. It's very rarely the case, especially when the de- liquid damage is directly outside of that area. Yeah, I, I don't see anything nasty here. Hey, Daniel, how are you? That CD3215 looks pretty dead to me. Well, the CD3215 may actually not be bad. It may just be that the stuff around it had some corrosion, shorting one line to another. It happens, so... I'm just doing... I'm kind of like filing my nails right here. That's what I like to call this. I'm just filing my nails. There's one resistor to the right over here that's completely screwed looking. I'm just going to pick that up. And we'll look at what the rest of it looks like on the other side. Turn the light up a little bit so you can see. Use the totally different LLC and then you have legal separation. That has nothing to do with this problem whatsoever. Nothing to do with it. There's legal separation has nothing to do with this. Because if you had a different company, you would just have the fine go to a different company. So it really doesn't it doesn't help you at all. What is that red LED over there? That's not an LED, you mofo. That is that is not an LED. That's a liquid damage indicator. And in this case, it turned colors because someone actually got liquid damage on their MacBook. Usually it turns colors when it's humid outside. Okay, how about I put my soldering station up to an actual melting temperature? Thanks for what you've taught me through the videos. Keep it up, man. Thank you. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully it's been useful to you. When Lewis streams by the, I know it's late when Lewis streams, your videos help me understand circuit logic for university. Thank you. I'm glad. I'm glad someone learned something from this stuff. Thank you. Makes me feel like I'm not just wasting my time, and that means a lot. Thank you. Okay.
Turns red when humid or might get scared. Paul Daniels mystery solver. Yeah, that was funny. I'm never gonna forget that. That little bastard. That little bastard. He's cute. I had something like that in the store recently, actually. Um, okay. I want to be really careful there. The reason I put this on top of the chip is because I don't want the balls underneath the chip to get messed up. You can't reflow a chip when there's underfill around it. Uh, and uh, I don't really want to deal with replacing a chip that's underfilled because it's a, such a pain in the ass. All right, so someone who asked about what happens when the BIOS chip is messed up. This one, that's the ROM for the CD3215. So that could actually be our problem here, because you see the probe point right by it. doesn't look very nice. And we'll see what's going on there in a moment. Yeah, this probe point is destroyed over there. So it may not actually be the CD3215s that are the cause of the problem. Although that resistor is looking pretty nasty, and this cap does look pretty shorted. Again, this is an underfilled chip, so as nasty as this stuff looks, the area underneath the balls of the chip may actually be fine. So I'm just going to kind of clean around it a little bit. Also, keep in mind, when you have corrosion on your CD3215s, always check your sleep sensor, because this sleep sensor is going to be screwed up. And what that means is that this customer is going to come back in a month or two and say that my screen is always off, or it doesn't go to sleep when I close it, because that is a, a sensor over there. And it's very destroyed looking. So that resistor was barely even on the, on the machine. You saw it slid right off. And this cap over here is going to come off the board. You're out of here. Two dollar greenie for crit and did you get my postcard? I don't remember the names on the postcards, I'll be honest with you. I remember what they say sometimes, but I don't remember what's on them. I mean, I don't remember the name. I think I called Erica Emma for like two months. But thank you for the greenie. I know that probably sounds insensitive, but I, I'm just being honest. Like, it'd probably be better if I just said, yeah, of course, but I don't. I remember things like PP Bus G3 Hottish 12.56 volts on an Ace uh, A1278 and 8.55 volts on an A1466, but I don't really remember names. Except for Paul Daniels, because I curse him all the time. But I stopped cursing him, because he's a nice guy, and I realized that it's not his software that's wrong, it's his... It's 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 user error, and I should be cursing myself and not him. And that little pad just came right off, didn't it? Didn't it? You bastard. I'm gonna hope that that resistor that just had a pad come off is for something stupid, like a pull a pull up res I mean a pull down resistor, you know, one of those useless things. You mind if I ask a question? Absolutely, I do. If you ask to ask a question, I will mess you up. If you ask a question, it's totally okay. But if you ask to ask a question, then someone here will probably mess you up. Okay, what is that thing that just got knocked off? What got knocked off is awesome! A useless pull-down resistor to ground. Something that we don't need or give a shit about. Let's see. Useless UART pull-down resistor. Okay, 
Now this other p resistor that it was the corroded, that's a resistor that's needed. That's a very important one. That is for, uh, let's see, schematic and board view software over here. That is, yeah, some something speaking to the SMC. That's yeah, that's a data line between the SMC and the USB port controller. So we actually need that one. So some stuff you need and some stuff you don't really need. But the stuff that you need, you can't you can't just toss it off the board. So that I actually do have to replace. And luckily, the thing that I actually need is not the thing that I destroyed. So look at that, eh? Huh? Now, you may think that that's a shitty solder joint, and you're correct. I'm really trying to avoid using more heat than is absolutely necessary because I'm right next to an underfilled chip. Pretty much literally just like laying it in there and heating it at an angle. That's, that's enough, because I knew I had to eat something else right in that area. I don't want to give that shit any more heat than absolutely necessary. Now, the next thing is, what is this going to over here? Because this is clearly destroyed. So what is that probe point for? That's the next thing that's going to be on my list. I have had M1 machines du jour, but I believe that that's... Uh, well, by I, I mean my staff, not me. I don't actually fix shit here anymore. I'm really just kind of here to look pretty. I'll be honest with you. I'm just here to look pretty. Okay, so what is this? What is this? This probe point is PP3V3 UVC LDO. You, XB, LDO. Okay, so if I have 3.3, all I got to do is see if I have 3.3 volts there. If I have 3.3 volts there, I'm good. Lastly, I saw something right next to the CPU that gives me... Oh, man, that makes me so fucking sad. What are the chances that this is actually going to be a dead CPU? If this is a dead CPU, I'm going to be pissed. Oh man, this corrosion right by the CPU V-Core MOSFET. And that cap just came right off. I can put that cap back on later. First, let's see if I solve my charging issue. Oh, this is so lame. This is so effing lame. Yeah, it's going to be really lame if this machine has a dead CPU and I just wasted all this time on fixing a charging circuit on it. This looks like it's going to be something for the Paul, actually. Yeah, this, you know what? I think my meeting may actually be happening early. You know, f f funny coincidence there. I think my meeting may actually be early. Uh, yeah, I th yeah, eight. Oh, I, th I think it's actually around seven thirty-seven Eastern Standard. <laughs> Might just have to have, have to dip out of here a little early. All right. So what do we get? We get five volts, two hundred fifteen milliamps. So again, I, I may have to replace two CD thirty-two fifteens on this board. That also may just so happen to have a dead CPU. So this really looks like a uh, board for Paul, actually. This, you know, this, this was in Paul's status initial, initial, originally. I just thought I would you know, take some of the work off his hands, you know, make sure he's a little bit lower stressed. But it seems like this one would actually be, this one's actually uh, supposed to be in Paul's status. Yeah, it looks like this one's actually supposed to be in Paul's status after all. So my mistake, you know, be my bad. I th totally, shouldn't have st totally shouldn't be taking work from Paul here. All right, we also have a little bit of corrosion on this. Yoink. Yeah, this this may have a dead CPU. The touch bar connector is uh, is bad. It has to be replaced. And it's going to need replacement of underfilled CD3215. So I actually think this is probably an excellent time for Paul to take over. Yeah, it definitely is one of those times where I think he would he wants to show us his uh, his skills, his abilities. And uh, we're gonna, we're gonna run right at it. So let's see. Is PP3v3 underscore G3 hot present? It uh, does not ap appear to be. I believe there may be a short on PP3v. Oh my God! This corrosion by the screen. Oh man! There's little bits of corrosion in all the wrong areas here. Honestly. Yeah. This this looks like it's gonna be a really great job for Paul. This looks like one of those boards where Paul's just going to be uh, very, very happy that I, I saved it for him. So let's see. PP3v3 underscore G3 hot present. It is not. 
Okay, let's 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 troubleshoot PP three v three under G three hot then, shall we? This is gonna be a man, Jessa. Thank you so much for reminding me of that meeting that we have at seven seven thirty eight p.m. Man, I really appreciate that, Jessa. You making sure that I'm on time. You're a good friend. You're a good friend, Jessa. All right, so let's find, let's see, is this short at the ground or something else? So stop falling, eh. Okay. R6915 is gonna be over here. And do we have a short circuit to ground? We do not. That is 700 uh, ohms. Uh, yeah, yeah. That that that's that's not shorted. Doesn't seem like it's shorted. And again, this is drawing. Hmm. Now, uh, what's on the beginning of the circuit? Where's this diode? Do I have five volts coming into it? I don't even have 5 volts going in. 5 volts, no 5 volts, no 5 volts. Okay, so so what I did is um, I need PP3B3 underscore G3 hot for the USB-C MUX to work so that it charges. Do most models hardware failure show systemic design issues or factory related issues? I don't know what you mean by that. Um, it's I think you mean, are, are they putting it together differently each time it screws up? And if that's the case, then no, it's designed the way it is. It's not, yeah, it's not like somebody at the factory did something wrong. All right, so R6902. So I, I checked, I checked over here. I checked over here and I didn't have anything. So now I checked over here and I didn't have anything. So I'm going to check over here on R6902 and see what I got there. So R6902 is this one up here, and I don't have five. I don't have five. Is my meter working? Is five volts actually getting to the machine? Interesting, interesting. Five volts is over here. What the fuck? Okay, so WTF, WTF, WTF. So have five volts on my DC and fuse. Biggie, 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 oh, can't you see? Da 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 da, da hypnotize me. I just love your peepee -pee bus ways. Da 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 Okay, so this transistor's not opening, and this transistor is gonna get opened by the CD3215. So this transistor over here is not opening. Q3200, and Q3200 is... Uh, so this transistor is not opening over here, and this transistor is going to open when the CD3215 tells it that it can open. So the CD3215 is not even letting 5 volts through for PB3V3 underscore G3 hot to be created. So we have a couple of things here. So the first is that the touch bar connector is no good. The second is the CPU vCore MOSFET area uh, is, is damaged, which means the CPU may be dead. And the third is that we may have to replace two underfilled CD3215s with replacements, which means scraping off a lot of un underfill. And that, that's all the stuff that may be necessary to even figure out if this machine has any chance of ever working. And I say chance because there is an issue where the CPU MOSFET looks destroyed. We also have other random areas of corrosion over here. So we've got a little bit of nasty shit over there. That looks like it's about to fall off the board. 
these two tiny ICs over here uh, look like they both took a giant shit. So this is, yeah, that, that, that's a chip for the touch bar over there. That's a May. That's for PP1V8 uh, Mesa power. We have uh, random corrosion up here. Uh, and again, at the end of the day, after fixing all of the... Oh, n not to mention this, so there's a chance that we don't have... Oh, wouldn't this be funny if it had 52 volts went to the CPU data line already? So these are all things that have to be repaired on this board. And uh, even after fixing them all, you may end up with a board that actually has a dead CPU or you may end up having to sell them on a partial repair because there's a good chance of the touch bar not working. So at the end of the day, this is a board that I think I'm going to honor my employee Paul with because this was initially in his status. And I think, and you know, <laughs> look, look at the time. It looks like I have a meeting at, uh, that's starting right now. So about that's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I will uh, see you all in the next video. And uh, bye now. And uh, how's it going, Sonny? Anyway, yeah. It's crazy how that works. It's crazy. The timing. The timing. The timing.